So now we have an ECG approach to slow pulse or a bradyarrhythmia. So this is the plan through which we are going to show. We are going to see this lecture. First of all, we define what is slow pulse. Any heart rate less than 60 per minute is a bradycardia. So between the bradycardias and tachycardias, we have an arrhythmia called sinus arrhythmia. So sinus arrhythmia where the heart rate quickens and slows down spontaneously, whether it is related to respiration or respiration. So it is called respiratory sinus arrhythmia or non-respiratory sinus arrhythmia. In respiratory sinus arrhythmia, the faster component of the heart rate will happen during inspiration and slower component will happen in expiration. So respiratory sinus arrhythmia most often happens in children, whereas non-respiratory sinus arrhythmia, the heart rate is quickening and slowing down without no relationship to respiration. So non-phasic or non-respiratory sinus arrhythmia is, can happen in elderly and if it happens, it may indicate a coronary heart disease, sick sinus syndrome or earliest manifestation of digoxin toxicity. So sinus arrhythmia is most common arrhythmia in children and most common cause of irregular pulse in children. So here I am showing you ECG of sinus arrhythmia. So during one period of this recording, the patient has got a heart rate of almost 100 per minute. During one phase of recording, the patient has got a heart rate of almost 50 to 60 per minute. So spontaneous, you can see that heart rate is quickening and slowing down. So if you relate this to respiration, you the Heart, fast heart rate is happening during inspiration, slower heart rate is happening through this uh, um, uh, expiration. It is a respiratory sinus arrhythmia, most common in children. Whereas in adult, if it is happening spontaneously without the any respiratory involvement, then it is non-phasic or non-respiratory sinus arrhythmia, which can happen due to coronary heart disease or sick sinus syndrome or digoxin toxicity. In children, the presence of atrial septal defect will abolish sinus arrhythmia. So that's why in children, absence of sinus arrhythmia, you have to look for the disease. Whereas in elderly, presence of sinus arrhythmia indicates the disease, like sick sinus syndrome, CAD or digoxin toxicity. So absence of sinus arrhythmia, you have to look for disease in children. The presence of sinus arrhythmia in elderly, you look for disease in elderly. So now we come to what is causing the slow pulse. So now we have given this diagram many times to you. So it is a sinus rhythm, sinus node producing impulse through internal nodal pathways, through the atrium, AV nodal delay, then the AV conduction and the impulse goes down. So the bradycardias can happen because of the problem of a disorder of impulse formation. The sinus node itself forms less amount of impulses, which is a sinus bradycardia, or it may be problem in impulse conduction. The impulse may be blocked at the AV node or it can be blocked at the distal conduction system. So this is a disorder of impulse conduction, a classical example being atrioventricular block. So bradycardias can be due to abnormal impulse formation or abnormal due to your abnormal impulse conduction. So what is the ECG approach to the bradycardia? So here you can see that the basically you have upright P wave in L1, inverted P wave in AVR, and the P wave configuration is normal and constant RR interval, constant PR interval, constant PP interval, but only the heart rate is less than uh, 60 per minute. So this is a sinus bradycardia. So it satisfies all the criteria of the sinus rhythm, but the rate is less than 60 per minute is sinus bradycardia. So the commonest cause of sinus bradycardia is once again due to drugs, like drugs like verapamil, diltiazem, or beta blockers or amiodrone. In acute right coronary lesions, you can have bradycardia because right coronary supplies the AV node, the SA node in 60% of people's athletes may have bradycardia. Increased intracranial tension can produce bradycardia. Electrical problem, especially hyperkalemia, can produce brad bradycardia. So this is sinus bradycardia. Then we must understand about the pass. The pass is a period in which there is no QRS. So suddenly you find no QRS and there is a pass. That is a pass. The pass is a period in which the, the next QRS is supposed to come here. The QRS has not come here. So that is a pass. So whenever you have a pass, it may be due to disorder of impulse formation 
are due to disorder of impulse conduction. So if the sinus beat is not forming an impulse, that means there is no sinus impulse means the sinus impulse will not come out and produce atrial depolarization. That means there is no P wave. So inside the pass, if you do not find any P waves at all, it means the sinus node is the problem. So it is a sinus pass. That means sinus node does not produce impulse and it does not produce the P wave. Whereas inside the pass, if you find P waves and the P waves are not followed by QRS complexes, it is atrioventricular block, which means sinus node has formed the impulse. The atrial depolarization has happened, but this atrial depolarization cannot cross through the AV node and the distal conduction systems to go into the ventricles to produce ventricular depolarization. So, whenever you have a pass, if you do not have P wave inside the pass, it is sinus pass. When you have P wave inside the pass with no conduction to the ventricle, it is atrioventricular block. So, when now this is, we can see that pass here. You can see the pass here and inside the pass, you do not have any P waves. So, this is likely to be sinus pass. So, the sinus pass can be terminated by the escape beat as I have shown you. So, many times this escape beat comes as a savior. So, if an abnormal beat comes after a pass, it is likely to be the savior of this sinus arrest or sinus beat. So, any symptomatic pass, sinus pass of more than 2 seconds may need a pacemaker. So, now we come to the atrioventricular block. The atrioventricular block can be first degree atrioventricular block, second degree atrioventricular block or third degree atrioventricular block. So, in first degree atrioventricular block, all P waves are conducted to the ventricle but with no delay, but with delay. Here, there is no pass. There is a delay of conduction to the ventricle but there is no pass. Whereas in secondary atrioventricular block, some of the impulses are conducted, some of the P waves are conducted, some of the P waves are blocked. And third degree atrioventricular block, none of the P waves are conducted and the ventricles are going to be depolarized by the secondary pacemaker, either from the junction in the suprahis block or from the ventricle in infrahis block. Then there are two special types of atrioventricular block, which are 2 is to 1 AV block and high degree atrioventricular block, which do not, these two blocks do not come in in any of these degrees, 3 degrees. So once again, the first degree atrioventricular block, second degree and third degree are divided into two types. First degree atrioventricular block can be isolated or complicated first degree atrioventricular block. Second degree can be type 1, second degree or type 2, second degree mobits type 1 or diver type 2. Third degree atrioventricular block can be a suprahis complete heart block or a infrahis complete heart block.